Told you what to chase Told you how to run the race Every move was on the page But I didn't like their way Had to fight and misbehave Well, welcome back Last time I talked to you guys There was still snow on the ground And now it's like the middle of July So it's been a while But uh, we're going to pick up where we left off With the snowmobile projects uh, We're still going to be doing some work to the Everest Which is sitting back behind you guys And then I got the F chassis summit here off to the left uh, We're going to be working on upgrading both of those Probably going to do it in two separate videos Two separate series Um but just picked up this 2002 Renegade, um, picked it up locally, had been looking at parts on eBay and stuff like that, and when you start tallying up the cost of what people want for parts these days, I mean, I haven't been doing this for too long, haven't been shopping around that much, but I mean, it just kind of seems to make more sense to just buy a whole donor sled if you can find one. Um, what I paid for this is what, you know, some people on eBay, you're looking at the cost plus the shipping, um, just for a skid that doesn't even have shocks in it, I'm looking at what I paid for for this as a whole. So um, there's not there's more here than uh, than meets the eye. Um, it's not a whole sled, obviously, as you can probably tell already. Um, there's really nothing left under the hood besides the chain case and the jack shaft. Uh, but we bought it for the suspension components mainly. Um, it's a 2002, so it's got an SC10 2 in it, I believe, um, and not an SC10 3 like I would have liked to have, um, but. Couldn't find an 03 sitting around for as cheap as this one was. So uh, we have the SC10 3 in the Everest yet. That's probably going to stay in there. Um, and the 2 will go in the F chassis. And the 2 is still a hell of a step up from the C7 that's in uh, the F chassis. So, And all around, this has the good HPG uh, rebuildable shocks on it on the front and the rear. So if we have to, we can rebuild the shocks. Um, I think this has an inch and a half. Uh, I think it's inch and a half or inch and three quarter paddle track on it. Um, it's studded, it's not in the best condition, but it's usable, so we'll probably end up using that uh, for at least one season. Um, but anyway, that's what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to start getting this thing torn apart, um, getting all the parts sorted, and I'll go over with you guys what I got planned. So let's get after it. I think the first thing we're going to do is just drop the rear suspension. Uh, that should be the probably the easiest thing to do first, then we'll go after the front and just see what we can get done this afternoon. Might end up being a multi-day ordeal, but we'll see what happens. Gonna start wrenching and see how far we get. Find a way to change. I can leave to find my way. Caught up in a daydream. I beat my mind up there almost daily. It's how I pass time, no opinions safely. It's how I understand what I want in this place. See, because everybody wanna tell you bad things. What could go wrong? What they bring but success is a finicky thing. And if you ain't sure, no, it'll never be. I don't wanna let myself down myself. Got just about everything that I need stripped off of here. Um, didn't show everything. If you got any questions about how to take stuff off, feel free to ask in the comments. But um, 
Still would be worth pulling the chain case, uh, the steering, all the steering linkages, um, and the gas tank. I don't need any of that stuff, but I could always send it or sell it on eBay or something like that. Um, make a little bit, of my, little bit of my money back. Uh, I do actually still have to pull um, the trailing arm mounts. Um, so there's a little bit of work left to be done here, but um, for the most part, we got everything off that we need. And I actually may end up using that chain case if I decide to go nuts um, with the Everest. Possibly putting a different updated chain case in there. That way I can drop it um, and then get a taller lug track in there. Um, but we'll see what happens with that. So, show you guys everything that we pulled off. So front to back here we got sway bar, um, our steering linkages, uh, the radius rods. I'm going to have to try and straighten that one out or just get a different one, but um, for as cheap as I am, I paid for it, I'm going to try and straighten it out and use it. I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but we're going to do it. Um, yeah, and everything else came off super easy. I'm not sure if I filmed taking the drivers out or not. Uh, those came out pretty easy. The only tough thing with taking the drivers out um, is that little snap ring in the chain case. Um, if you got a pair of uh, 90 degree here right angle um, snap ring pliers that would help um, I do have a set of those but still was a giant pain in the ass trying to use those so I ended up just sticking a pick in there and uh, hooking one side of the snap ring and then just kind of pulling it out that way and that you know after like 45 minutes of dicking around with the pliers um, took like 30 seconds with the uh, pick just pulling it out so I guess I would recommend doing it that way if you're doing it but uh, the shocks look good I'm not sure if those are rebuildable or not. I feel like they are, but I'll have to look that up. Um, not 100%. Skis are in decent shape. Uh, the skis themselves are good. Carbides on, I think, the left side could be replaced. But we'll probably grab a um, whole set of, full set of carbides for, uh, for each side. So I think I mentioned it already, but the plan here is to take these trailing arms, these skis, these shocks, and put them on the F chassis. Should be basically um, a direct... Direct swap, direct bolt in, and that'll raise the front end up and get us out of the weeds a little bit. We're going to be taking the trailing arms and skis off of here and throwing them on the Everest um, and the shocks and everything else. Um, as far as radius rods, sway bar, steering linkage, everything, we're going to keep what's there and that'll actually be usable, um, should be usable with uh, the trailing arms from the ZX chassis. Uh, at least I think it should be. Um, if it's not, we'll work around it, but I'm pretty sure it's just going to be a direct bolt on situation. And uh, the only reason I'm not changing any of the steering setup there is because it's all good to go already. Uh, there's really no point in messing with it. I may have to lengthen the tie rods to get the right camber on the skis after uh, putting the longer shocks on there, but we'll see. Um, so I may end up using the um, tie rods off of the ZX on here, but not 100% sure yet. And then because the Everest is kind of, you know, so much of a blank canvas or open platform at the, this point in time I can uh, work a little bit more freely with that and make the ZX parts work with fabrication a little bit easier than um, I could on the F chassis so we'll not mess around with this too much as it is because this thing's really somewhat of a time capsule it's actually in really good shape so I don't want to mess around too much with it um, as far as altering things from from stock but um, the Everest is kind of full go. We'll do whatever we have to do with that. I don't really give two shits about what happens with it. So uh, we'll cut it up and hopefully make something cool out of it. I'll probably end up keeping the tunnel and everything. Oh, I still have to grab the grab bar off the back, but I'll probably end up keeping the tunnel as just like aluminum stock. I'm not even 100% sure if I could scrap that without a title. The heat exchangers, probably not worth keeping. Um, the one on the back here is all sorts of tore up. I don't know how it's not leaking. Maybe it was leaking and that's why this thing got scrapped. I'm not 100% sure. But, uh, yeah, anytime you run on the track with studs and you don't have, uh, the proper size, whatever you want to call them, protectors on the bottom side here, uh, the studs just get up in there. And I mean, even if you do have the, the tunnel protectors on there, um, you lose a stud, it'll still get kicked up and can put a hole in your heat exchanger easily enough. All right, so I'm pretty much done with this thing. Um, I'll probably pull some more stuff off of it off camera, but no need to show you guys that. So I will pick back up with you uh, once the Summit is swapped out in its place and we start doing the disassembly on that and trying to get that rear suspension up in there. All right, so we got the Summit swapped out in place here. The rear end's jacked up. I uh, started taking the skid out, got the rear shocks unbolted. Um, for now, I think I'm going to leave this track in there, like I said. 
The other one, I'm going to work on pulling those studs out, and then we might try and run that for a season, but it's pretty rough. Um, we'll take a look at that later. And then I think, like I said, we'll run this for a season and maybe look at getting a inch and a half, or maybe we can squeeze a two inch in there. Let's get this pulled out the rest of the way. I just got to undo those front bolts up there, and then we'll sneak that out of there. And I'm wondering if I can actually use um, the idlers here um, on the SC10 2 skid, or at least take off two of them and toss them on there instead of spending more money. Probably won't look quite right, but uh, whatever. At least there'll be idlers in there, but 100% um, honest with you, I'm not actually sure if those are going to uh, work on the new skid. Uh, the more I stand here and look at it now, it actually looks like that's uh, probably not going to work out, but uh, we'll pull them off there and take a look. So with the two skids side by side there, you can see some of the similarities and differences between the two. Um, I really don't know how much weight we're going to be uh, losing, if any, from going to the C7 to the SC10. Um, you know, they feel actually feel pretty comparable in weight. Um, I don't know why the back of that seems so much heavier. Um, probably because of the big ass heat exchanger that's back there. That's probably where all the weight's coming from. But uh, if anything, I'd guess we might be losing maybe five to ten pounds. Uh, just by getting those dual shocks off the rear. Um, but I think I'll actually be able to use those idlers or a set of those idlers uh, to replace the ones that are missing there. But I'm going to take uh, the SE10, go pressure wash that, get it cleaned up. Um, then i got to see if I can scavenge a bushing off of this one somewhere that I can use um, on the lower shock mount there on the front arm. Um, it's got a little bit of a slop or a little bit of a wobble to it, some slop in it. So I'm going to see if I can get that tightened up before we throw that in there. Um, and then probably not going to do too much else to it. The slides are in decent shape yet, so um, might as well just toss it in there and call her a day. But we'll clean it up a little bit first. I might even pull that shock out and clean that up, give it a coat of paint. Um, didn't really figure out if those are rebuildable or not. Like I said, I'm pretty sure they are, but um, that one seems to have some rebound left in it, so we're not going to go through that process yet either. Um, hopefully we'll just get this thing together and be able to use it for a season and figure out where all the weak points are at and then go through and work on it again next year because that's half the fun. You just watched me make a new bushing for this uh, upper mount here. Um, the one that was in there was pretty well shot. Um, I'm not sure what material they are. It might be poly, some kind of poly, but uh, I made one on a metal, so it's really more of a spacer than it is a bushing, but uh, it'll work for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and grease this thing up and then we'll get our brackets mounted and uh, we'll get this tucked up underneath the sled.
So all in all, not a bad job. Pretty quick, actually. Um, you can utilize the existing front mount holes on the F chassis. Um, and with the C7, you would have just had to move the rear mount brackets forward uh, to meet the center to center distance that the SC10 requires. Um, but I got rid of those altogether and I used the brackets off the Renegade chassis. Um, I want to say the center to center distance was like 30 and 5 8 inches, I believe, somewhere in there. You guys saw me put those new brackets on there. Um, that lined up damn near perfect um, and it seems to function well. You saw me hop up and down on it there. It seems to rebound pretty good. Definitely gained a couple inches of uh, height in the rear. And then while I was at it, I also swapped out the rear grab bar, uh, the plastics on the end of the tunnel there, and the snow flap. Um, just kind of gives it an updated look. Makes it look a little bit more streamlined, I think, a little bit newer. Still some work we gotta do yet. Uh, I looked into the front end swap a little bit more, and I think what I'm gonna end up doing is actually just swap out the shocks and leave the rest alone. The DSA arm to the ADSA arm is not as easy as I thought it was gonna be. It can still be done, but it's kind of just not worth the work. Doesn't really make any sense to do it. But what we can do is swap out the front shocks for some that are a little bit longer, a little bit taller, and then that'll still get the front end up to where we want it to be without having to completely redo the geometry of the front end. The length of the shocks that are on there now are about 13 and a half inches eye to eye, and I should be able to fit a 15 inch in there without too many issues, so I was lucky enough to find uh, a set of 15 inch HPGs that are rebuildable on eBay, snag those. I think they're off of like a 2003 Summit X Highmark or something like that. Um, took a closer look at the shocks that were on the Renegade and they are not rebuildable, but they're still in decent shape. So we're gonna use them on the uh, Everest project. And I mean, there's plenty of 17 and 18 inch uh, rebuildable options out there. So once those go, um, it'll be easy enough to replace them. But um, I think it'll be nice having the longer ones on the front end of this, like I said, it should get it up. And then that'll also help the rear function a little bit better. As it sits right now, the front end is a little bit too low and we're putting a lot of pressure on the front arm, which, I mean, that would change if we were in snow. It's a little bit sitting on concrete right now isn't really a true test of it, but um, as it's sitting right now, there's too much pressure on the front arm and that's actually affecting how the rear arm functions. So the SC10 is, well, the SC10 2 and 3, uh, at least, are fully coupled, coupled suspensions. So how the front arm actuates also affects the rear arm. So getting the front end up a little bit more will take the weight off of that uh, front arm and redistribute it kind of a little bit more evenly um, over both arms. As it sits right now, that's really not that big of a deal, but I think that will help how it handles overall. Um, and aside from that, I gotta find some carbides for these skis. Uh, these are the original Simmons Flexi Ski and I'm not 100% sure where I can get carbides from the, for those. I think they're uh, a little bit of an odd size, but I'll have to dig around on the internet and see what I can find. Still more to come with this. I'm gonna be putting risers on it yet. Uh, obviously the front shock's gotta be done. And then I need to get a CDI box for this too. Uh, get one of those for it and she should be running like a dream again. And then I also want to get a can for it, but I'm probably gonna have to get uh, this is a 94, so I'll probably have to get a pipe from a 95 or a 96. Um, I don't know why, but the uh, the exit flange is a little bit different from 94 to 95, and they don't make an aftermarket can that directly fits on the 94 pipes, um, but you can just toss in a 95 and then get an MBRP can that should mate right up to it. Um, the other option is to just snag a generic can off Marketplace. There's quite a few of them on there right now for relatively cheap. And then we can just hack that one up and weld it so it fits. Um, shouldn't really be that big of a deal. Um, most of the back pressure and everything that's important um, is handled in the tuned portion of the pipe itself. And then, I mean, silencing kind of just happens within the can itself. So shouldn't really be that big of a deal if we cut that one up too much. And I mean, if it does have any sort of small effect, we can always rejet the carbs and play with that. But might be a better idea to just look for a pipe from a 95 or a 96 and just go the uh, the route that requires less cutting and welding, but we'll see what happens with that. Uh, for now, I'm gonna end this here, and then once I get those shocks, um, I'll probably make that a separate video, getting that all set up, because we'll have to readjust the radius rods and um, tie rods and everything else to get the correct geometry on the front end again. That'll be interesting, see if I can do that correctly the first time, but take a little bit of messing around but 
Um, I know earlier in this video I did mention that I thought the ADSA or DSA to ADSA trailing arm swap front end suspension would be, you know, kind of a, a bolt in thing. Just want to reiterate that it is not. Um, it is possible to do. There's just a lot more swapping involved, um, especially from a ZX to a, a an F chassis. Um, if you wanted to do it, I think the best way to do it would be to use an ADSA setup from an S chassis to an F chassis. That would be a little bit easier um, as the radius rods are closer in length and I think the bracket that the radius rods mount to on the S chassis can just be taken out of an S chassis and bolted directly into an F whereas the ZX is completely different. So something to keep in mind, just wanted to correct that so uh, I don't lead you guys astray if you're doing something like this but um, generally overall snowmobile suspension swap pretty easy job this collectively took less than a day to do i just split it up over multiple days worked on it a couple hours here and there but any questions as always feel free to leave them down in the comments and i will see you guys in the next one Rolling up, Uber, black Cadillac, high heel boots, and a sexy body full of tats. Baby's bad, oh baby's hella bad. After her, there ain't no coming back. Wanna take a run at that? I think.